Hello good people and welcome to Finder Skills Hub here. We learn, we connect and we grow. If you work with data that comes in periodically, let's say month on month, and you want to find a way to combine them in the same workbook so that you could probably do a month on month comparison or analysis, then you have to use Power Query. So in this short video, we are going to show you how you can use Power Query to combine or append a set of data that comes in every month so that you can do comparative monthly analysis. In this case, we are going to use a trial balance, but I'm sure you can also pick some lessons and then apply it to your own kind of data sets. So if you are game, join me in Excel and let's go through this together. Okay, so we begin with our workbook. It has three worksheets, January, February, and March. And in the uh, the different trial balance statements for each month. So here I have code, ledger, debit or credit, and then the balance, All right? So typical structure. Now, if I go on month on month, February and March is the same headers. It's usually useful this way. If you want to append data, you should have the same headers throughout. Now we've intentionally named these worksheets with the abbreviated month names because we'll be using this to be able to sort the data chronologically as they come in right now before we begin it helps if you can convert your data into tables right makes it easy for power query to load the data now to convert into a table you stand in any cell in this data block go to insert go to insert and then insert a table okay and Click OK. So this is a table. I have my table design here. I'll name this JN the same way. Okay. Then I'll come to February. Use a shortcut for this table, Control T. Okay, for this one, name this one FEB. And then I'll come to match another Control T to finish this off. And this is MAR. Okay, so now that we've named our tables, we need to launch Power Query. So to launch Power Query, you come to your data tab, okay? Get data. Now, it depends on the version you are using, but most likely you have it in the file left under the data tab. Look for from other sources. We want to launch a blank query, okay? So with a blank query, we can use a custom formula to be able to call all the tables that are in that workbook, right? So when Power Query opens up, I get this blank, environment and the formula bar is active right the formula i'm going to use is equal to excel dot current workbook so this pops up and then you can tap okay open and close bracket so what this basically does is if i press enter it scans and then brings all the named ranges or tables that are in my workbook okay so if you click on the side you see that all your contents are available here it also brings along the worksheet names as well. Now, this is not guaranteed that you always have it in the order that we want, January to December, right? So we want to take advantage of the month names to create a date column that will be used to sort the sheets chronologically anytime it comes in. Okay, so based on that, we want to add a column to this before we go ahead and append that column is going to be a date column where we'll draw our month names, month values actually. So I'll go to add column, then go to custom column. So with custom column, I can generate a new column if I like. So let's, let's call this month. Okay. Now I want to take advantage of these month names to create a date. Okay. So I'm going to join one dash. Okay. Bring an ampersand. Okay and then join this with the name column okay and then bring another ampersand and then join this with a dash 2024 okay so basically what i'm doing is i'm just creating a date using this remember everything i'm doing here is being recorded so when subsequent data comes in it will follow the same format right so i'll go ahead and then i'll click so i now have this month column to be able to sort chronologically I can convert this into a proper date, okay? So I have my dates here. 
But the reason I created this is to be able to get month values so that I can sort. So while here, I'll go to transform, okay, and then use this date icon to extract the month values that I'm looking for, right? So this is what I have. Now, with this set, I can now go ahead and then click on this icon, okay, to expand. We'll take off the use original column as prefix, makes the column headers long, and then I'll click OK. Right. So I now have my code, I have my ledger, I have my debits, I have my credits, and then I have my balances here. If you look to the far right, you notice that you have the worksheet names sorted properly and then the month column also here. Okay. Now, for our purpose, what we actually need is just the ledger, okay, the column that has the balances. So I'll hold control and select this one, okay, and then the name of the month, right? So I selected these with control. So ledger, balance, and then the name of the month. Now, the reason I did this is I want to remove all the other columns, okay? So I'll remove all the other columns. So I have my ledger, my balance, and then the name. Now these have to be formatted properly, applying the right data format. So I can highlight all and then detect data type. So this way I have text, uh, a number, and then I have the name of the month as text. Okay, so this is done. So the next thing I want to do is that I want to make the balances absolute values, okay? Because we're doing month on month variance analysis, right? I want these as absolute values. So to take off the minus signs, I will select the balance, come to transform, and then under the scientific tab, I have absolute value over here, right? So I'll name this combined, okay? So that it comes in as my combined worksheet. So we are done here. I'll go to home, close and load, and then close and load. Okay, now we want to basically dump this as a table in the same workbook. We expect an error, and this error is very useful because it would allow us to determine what kind of data will be allowed in the query, right? So I'll just go ahead and then dump this as a table, and then I'll click OK, right? Okay, so far things look good. Now let's try and refresh and see what we get. Okay, so if I refresh, now you'll notice that my number of rows keeps increasing okay now this is because if you go back to power query you notice that if i go to the source step okay at first there are just three tables okay i added this custom column and then when i come to the third step there's an error now that error is coming about because the combined table that i just dumped in the workbook okay is now part of the tables that has been scanned, right? You see that when you come to the refresh and then you refresh all, okay? So you notice that combined is now part of this list. We don't really need that. So what we are going to do is at the point where it throws this error, basically it cannot generate a date from this combined sheet, okay? We want this error removed, okay? So I'm going to right click and then I'll choose remove errors. Okay, so this is going to be added as a step. So what this means is that any sheet that comes in that is not named with the abbreviated month names will automatically be thrown as an error, including the combined worksheet. Okay, so at this point when the error comes in, this remove error acts like a filter and then it goes on with the rest of the process. Right, so that is how we are going to make sure that everything that is scanned is just the month names. So at this point, I'll go and then close and then load. You realize that I now have my 114 rows for the three months. If I refresh, it's still 114 rows. Okay, now I really want to keep this as a pivot table, so I'm going to push this here. So I'm going to right click. And then instead of loading it as a table, I want to load it as a pivot table so I can use it for my month on month analysis. So this pivot table is going to sit in the same worksheet. I'll click OK. 
um, and then convert this into a pivot table. Now for my pivot table analysis, I want to analyze my balances, which will go to the value section. And then I'll bring in my ledgers on the row side. Okay. And then for my month names, it actually saw it here as names. You can always go back and then correct this. So you can go back to Power Query. Okay. Data queries and connections. Just double click this one. And then let's call this month. So that's so I just made this correction. If I close, I expect this to refresh. And then when I come back here, this is month, right? So what we want to do with the month is to use it in the column section. Okay, so I'll take this and then push it here. So now you notice that you have January, February, March, and then you have your grand total over here, right? If it helps, you can format this, okay? Now you can now do your month on month analysis, but first let's get rid of the grand total. So I right click and then remove this grand total. Now, basically what we want to do is at every point in time, we want to be able to compare two months, right? So I want to insert a slicer, right? So standing in a pivot table, I'll go to insert and then insert a slicer on the month names and then I'll click OK. Okay, so this way, right, I select only January, I get only January. If I do shift or control and select the second one, I get January and February in that order. Now, I want to do variance, right? So the variance will now compare the difference between the two months that I have selected. Now, to do that in pivot tables, what we need to do is that we need to drag the balance column or field a second time in the value section. Right, so I'll take this balance and then drop it here. Okay, so what that gives me is I now have for each month the sum of balance and then the sum of balance too. Right, so at this point, I'm going to just select two months so that you appreciate what's going on. Okay, so I have this. Now that's sum of balance over here instead of showing the real values, we want it to show as the difference from the previous. Okay, so I'll select this column. Okay, right click, and then you see show values as in the right click menu. So here we have some options to change the way it calculates. So I'm going to choose difference from. Okay, so I'll choose difference from. Now my base field, because I want to do monthly analysis is going to be the month. And then the base item is going to be the previous. So I'll click OK. Now you'll notice that I have January here, but because January is the first month, right, that previous calculation is blank for January. But for February, which is the latter month, I have the actual values and then the difference. Okay. So for this purpose, we will normally hide the blank columns for the first month. So I'll right click this and then hide. Okay, so that we actually have the first two months and the variance. So let me name this variance. I'll highlight this and then call this variance. Okay, and then let me call this the balance with a space. Okay, okay, so I have January and February and the variance, right? Now for this variance, what we want to do is to put in a conditional format. Okay, so that for the changes that are positive is green, vice versa is red. So I'll highlight this. Okay, go to conditional formatting. Then in the data bars, I'll put in the green. Okay, okay, so you can invert it if you want. Okay, so if you look closely for something like cash, right? Cash was 15,000 in February, it reduced. Okay, so we have this variance over here. Okay, All right. Now, if I select one month, this shouldn't show, but let's say if I do February and March, okay, this should show, but the conditional formatting goes off. Okay, so what we need to do is when we select the January and February and we have this, we can go to conditional formatting, manage the rules, Okay, come here and then edit the rule. Okay, and say that all cells showing variance so that regardless of the month that we select, 
we should still we should still see the conditional formatting apply okay so i'll apply okay okay so let's test this and then see if it's working so february alone february and march now i have this right so at this point every month that comes in the slicer will update you can always select the two months that you want to compare now of course we need to test this to be sure it's working so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate march okay and then call it april so i'll hold control and then duplicate this okay right click rename this let's call this april okay so that date will be created for april come to my table design and then name this april as well okay so if i refresh the expectation is that i should see april come up here so i'll come in here refresh all so april pops up right now if i select march and april okay because the the numbers are the same i don't really expect any variance here right but let's say if i go in there and i change the movement for april to four hundred thousand, okay and then i come here and i refresh all let's see if it shows up so if i come here and i go down here you notice that i now have that positive change okay of eighty thousand. Right, so you can actually keep this as your workbook and once it refreshes with new data, as long as you keep the naming structure that can give you the dates, okay, you can always use this to select any two months that you want to compare and then see your trial balance variances month on month. As I said, it can be applied to any data set that has the same structure using Power Query. Power Query, Power Pivot, DAX, Cube Functions are all very powerful tools you can use in Excel. If you are new to these tools and you want to really use it to enhance your work, I encourage you to get my book, Data Modeling with Excel. So we cover all these tools in detail with a case study so that you can actually apply it and then work with data in a very, very effective way. So the hard copy, if you're in Ghana, is available. If you want to buy it on Amazon too, the link has been shared there. Go get a copy and practice. Thank you so much for joining us and see you in the next video. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.